All right, so this is Corey Merritt here from Corey Merritt Music. A uh, new single just released, so we're going to play that for you. It's called Us Against the World. And uh, this is it. If you want to go give a follow, Corey Merritt Music on Facebook, Instagram, all those things. Something I think here. we're good. I think we're not all right. too bad. Not all too right. bad. All right, Corey Merritt, welcome to my creepy basement. How you Thanks. doing, buddy? Well, not too bad. Thanks for having me here. It's <laughs> awesome to get in down in this basement. It's pretty Th sweet. Thanks for coming, man. It was short notice. I mean, I had an opening on a Friday, and I was just like, man, I wonder if anybody wants to come and keep me out of trouble on a Friday for at least a couple hours. Me, me. <laughs> and you were the first one up there on social media. Like, I, I mean, I don't even think I had the post up for more than fifteen minutes until you were like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, Corey, let's talk about how you get into music. What starts you off? What bites you in the bug? What uh, What is the first album that gets you into it? Who buys you a guitar? Start it off, Corey. Well, um, so we always had a guitar in the house growing up. So I've been playing for, I don't know, since I was 13, I've been trying. Um, not well, no lessons, just kind of slowly progressed. Uh, as for inspirations, I don't know. Dallas Green is pretty much doing it for me. His ambience is pretty sweet. So As a kid, though? Well, I mean, in early years, I mean, I'm only 31, so I was yeah. 16. Oh, yeah. He was putting out his first stuff. That's when I really started hitting music hard. Nice, nice. So you got, like, hooked by the uh, the Dallas Green solo stuff or, like, the Alexis on Fire stuff? Uh, Alexis was the start of it. Okay. Going to Warp Tour. 
Nice. That kind of shit. Okay. All right. So your parents, you know, they were just like, all right, he's going to go to a concert. He's going to go have some fun. He's going to go see this band. And you went to Warp Tour. Yeah. And yeah, your they, parents had no idea what you got yourself into. Oh, pretty much exactly that. Just dropped us off at, uh, I think it was Molson Park at the time. Oh, they, that was the best one. The grimiest. It was the first year we went, and it unfortunately was then moved to the convention center or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That was bullshit. Well, I mean, that was one of the most amazing parks when edge fest would happen there i mean that was the thing that would blow my mind and then like one time i remember it was like late at night and like people would camp over the night before and then we broke through a fence and then people literally like broke open transport trailers and like hauled beer cases out like it was insane at that park i saw the beastie boys play with rage against the machine there that's freaking cool dude it was one of the craziest shows but this is the thing the beastie boys didn't like moshing so imagine you have a full out rage show, a full out mosh pit. They don't give a shit. And then all of a sudden the Beastie Boys come out and Adam's like, come on, everybody, you got to stop. Everybody, no, there'll be no moshing. There'll be no hitting. There's no violence at our shows. And they literally tried to stop a mosh pit that was happening. And every time they do it, you just turn around and there'd be this sea of bottles that would come at you. <laughs> it was insane. But I mean, those were one of the craziest shows that I can remember. What was the craziest one you've ever done or been to? Uh, it was probably that first warp Tour, to be honest, with nice. all the dust kick up from all the mosh pits, like seeing Billy Talent when he was pretty new, Antihero. Um, who else was there? Uh, August Burns Red, Alexis on Fire. It's friggin' pretty killer. All right, so this one is, we just discerned this, Whitney Houston. Is that what we said? <laughs> Dance with somebody. Uh, it's a cover of a cover, so let's give that a go. The clock strikes upon the hour and the begins to fade There's still enough time to figure out how to chase my blues away I've done all right up till now It's a light of day that shows me how And when the night falls my loneliness calls Lost my senses spinning through the town Sooner or later the fever ends And I wind up feeling down I need someone to take the chance On a love that burns hard enough to last And when the night falls my loneliness goes with somebody I want to feel the heat with somebody yeah I want to dance with somebody who is somebody who loves me yeah I want to dance with somebody and I want to feel the heat with somebody <laughs> no, no one can remember the old concerts anymore because we've been cooped in the house for the past year and a half. So what have you been doing while you've been stuck inside? Uh, playing a lot of guitar. Started this new project, uh, Corey Merritt Music, which you guys uh, will have or have seen. Um, the single already and a to-be-released single. Um, that's basically all I've been doing. We've got a bunch of tracks down in the studio at Treblecock Studios, by nice. the way. Yeah. Um, downtown Underground. Cool. Um, and we're hoping to, you know, really hit it hard this year. Nice. But, I mean, it's just going to be you. This is a solo project? Yeah, yeah. singer-songwriter kind of solo thing. Okay. I mean, for now. Nice. We'll see what happens. I'm not really limiting myself to anything specifically, but 
So you used to play in a band, though. You used to have the, uh, the what was it, Merit Band? Yeah, or? Merit the Band, and Mer- we hosted like some open mics and stuff. But we were just a live performance uh, shit show. Okay. Um, nice. So My favorite. <laughs> you're trying to take this down a notch uh, so we can, I can actually play at certain bars. Okay. <laughs> so now you've kind of softened up the act a bit, and you're out there, and you're playing live shows and stuff like that. Where do you frequent around Peterborough? Um, currently it's just been really the garnet at this point. I, I love the garnet. Yeah. I almost bought the garnet once. <laughs> oh, it's sweet looking inside. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, so we did a couple shows there. Um, on the fourteenth of August, we've got well, I've got one coming up. Uh, with Billy Marks and Heir to the Throne, uh, the Red Dog. Nice. Getting out there playing the Red Dogs. So are you opening that show? What day is that? Um, it is uh, August 14th. Okay, so next week. So let's talk about that. When do you decide that you are actually going to start to make music? Do you perform at a high school talent show? Like, what really bites you in the ass when it comes to that live performance and really, you know, gets your juices going? I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Um, Really just a child's dream. Uh, watching Blink-182 go up there and saying whatever they wanted to say about mm-hmm. anything and being silly as all heck. Um, that was what did it for me. And when's the first time you get on stage, though? When's the um, first time you perform in it, front of a crowd? It was, uh, I think, grade seven. We had a school talent show. I Shemong knew it. It's Public always the talent show. At Shemong Public School. Nice. And would you know it, we played Seven Nation Army, and I did the vocals for it. And my microphone was out for the first half. It's the second half, so ah. I'm sick. And then we lost to um, a bunch of girls, definitely not dressed to the co- dress code, uh, dancing to the cha-cha slide, following oh. the directions. Well, there you go. So th- that's slide to the left. And now then I was like, to the right. I'm going to beat you next time, girls. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. I guess we're going to do the next single or the one after. It's not released yet. And it's called Making Changes. By by the way, it's by Corey Merritt Music. If I didn't specify, this is my own. (laughs) I've just now barely figured it out. Blame myself for the place that I am. I've learned a lot and lost even more on the way Got nothing to show for it but scars and a smile on my face And I'll say you <laughs> 
all those girls <laughs> are probably going to do that at like one of their weddings or they have done that. Like, oh my God, let's do that thing that we did at the talent <laughs> show years ago. We'll do it at my wedding. It's going to be so cool. One of them probably got hurt, tore an ACL or hammy or something like that. You know, trust me, those girls got it in the end when it came to that performance. (laughs) Uh, You know what? Everyone does. It's fair. Yeah. In fairness, if I was in the crowd, I probably would have fucking voted for the girls (laughs) dancing. So I I don't know what to say. All right. So, I mean, like the White Stripes kind of gets you. Dallas Green kind of gets you. Alexis on Fire kind of bites you in the ass. Now you're coming out of high school. Now do you got a job. Are you looking at universities? Are you... What are you doing coming out of high school where you're just like, nope, music? Well... I kind of took a long time with high school because mm, I like to s- skateboard. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really have the uh, the drive for music per se until after I had kids, I guess. And then all of a sudden mm. I decided I didn't like working for 18 bucks an hour or 20 bucks an hour. Like, it's still pretty good cash, but well, all right. Sure, but like... Mm, you're the time, not going to make that play in the Red Dog per hour. No, I don't make yeah. shit right now, no. but you know what? Hey. Doing doing what I love. All right, man. <laughs> you're throwing caution in the wind, and you're going hard into the dream, I guess. Yeah, you. we'll see what happens. So everyone who sees this, help me. <laughs> Book this guy. Honestly, he'd be great at a wedding or something like that. A lot of people are having outdoor weddings, I've been hearing. There's a lot of different There's a lot of different weird sort of booking places that are happening and, like, event centers that are starting to book places, like, kind of outside the Peterborough area. I've been hearing about this wedding venue that's out in Keene. There's another sort of wedding venue that's been hosting concerts out in Cavan. And there's all these other different venues that are just sort of outside the Peterborough area that where you probably could get booked. But, I mean, that's going to be in the future. What are you thinking when it comes to this album and these um, these tracks that you've already laid down at the Treblecock Studio? Um, What's going to go on with that? Is there going to be videos? Is this going to be coming out on a Spotify channel? What's the Corey Merritt solo project plan? Well, so far, uh, we released the first single, which was Us Against the World. I performed it first there, I believe, if you edit it in the correct... All right. <laughs> um, that was the first song. So we've got that on Spotify under Corey Merritt Music, um, and that goes across the board. No spaces. You can type it into anything, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. It's all cohesive there. Um, so the plan is to kind of do some timed releases of singles to hopefully stir up some interest and then determine whether we have a full album to put out after that. Okay. Uh, kind of fly by night at this point, to be honest. We want to make some music videos. I've got some ideas, but I'm kind of a DIY, so I'm really involved, so it's taking it goes. <clears throat> I'm done from complications Complications to the things that I've left undone And all my debts will be left unpaid Feel like a cripple without a cane I'm like a jack of all trades Who's a master of none Take after my mother I guess 
still take after my mother Guess I'll take after my mother. Me a bit. <laughs> All right, I got you. So, what's your idea for the music video? Because I hope it's outlandish as hell. I mean, it's a, it's a good video that we're that we're planning. Have you wrote out storyboards? What do you think? Um, I'm kind of just in like the conceptual phase at this point. Uh, mm. We were talking today, actually, in studio about. Uh, well, I guess now a bunch of days ago <laughs> sorry time travel again um and we were talking about uh potentially doing like a um a shadow puppet style Ooh. like behind with the light background yeah, yeah, and yeah, the silhouettes yeah. and whatnot and just using like marionettes for i was gonna say are you one of those guys that can do that with your hand and stuff and uh, no no, no i never could no, i but. not so good at that part but you know could be a different talent i mean think we'll about see it. add that to the live show shadow puppets uh, I don't know if that's a selling point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but either way, that does sound like a very cool video. If you want to hire me, I'll do it. That I'll does do sound like a very cool video it. concept, man. I do like that. And uh, do you have any concepts for any other songs, or are you just working? You just got this one thing for that one song where you're really thinking? Um, well, we've, I've got another concept that it's, it's, once again, still quite early, and that's for um, another one I just performed called Making Changes. So I want to show like a, a progression of working the nine to five to like the grind to get the all these things and then like almost a regression back but for the positive back to realizing like to decommoditize and does that make sense to you yeah yeah i got you hence well i mean i'm going to tiny home living so it's kind of directly like <laughs> right okay so uh, let's explain this where are you living right now what's the current situation where you're living and where we're gonna go and what kind of inspired this um, well, I live in a full house. Uh, mm -hmm. After it becoming empty and not really needing a full house, I realized uh, there's a lot of overconsumption in my life. And so I decided I wanted to downsize and I wanted to be mobile. So you're going to go the minimalist route. And you're um, going to downsize into a tiny home? It's going to be a friggin' nice place. Yeah. And I'm going to have all I need, but really. Did you build it? Have you found it? I'm just buying an RV and then I'm going to deck it out. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so, so that I can drive it around and. Oh, you're going full RV. You're not just going trailer. You're going... Well, I'm going to have a permanent base in it with a trailer somewhere, but I okay. want to be able to scoot off to the mountains or go on tour. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's a great way to go on tour. No I hotel. Mean, yeah, exactly. But I mean, you can stay in the national parks and stuff like that across the country. I mean, that's the way that we used to go across the country. Did you ever do it with your family in like an old van or a station wagon or oh, anything? Oh, yeah. We had the White Tornado 1992 Grand Caravan. Oh, and we'd hell go, yeah. We went out east four times. Nice. Three times. Three times. Let me correct that. Dude, one time me and my sister had to go to PEI in the back of a Beretta. All right, like the old Pontiac Beretta with two doors, and then after that trip, that was when my parents were like, "We're buying a van." All right, no, they both get sweet. their own seats, and then we can yell at them from the captain's. And table. you can separate them too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're the best. So, and what are you cruising these days? Anything right now? Um, nothing right now. I'm just nothing gonna, right now. Yeah, no bandwagon, but. Not at the moment. All no. right. So, are you selling this house? And uh, no, I just rent. Ah, I just don't okay. want the monthly expenditures gotcha 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 so you're just you're gonna go tr you're gonna go straight nomad with your guitar and see what happens basically Dude, i mean i'm liking this what did you do before like what um, where I, does this where does this into the wild concept come around i, mean, I don't know i was a carpenter before this you were a carpenter yeah from framing to finished carpentry i've worked a bunch of different okay. sectors went through and uh, did some of my apprenticeship for that mm-hmm 
and, and then, then stop enjoying it. Just disillusion. I mean, I get well, it, like man. Like killing trees, watching I mean, how many friggin' pieces. Dude, of I get it. I was I was going to be it. an industrial mechanic forever, and I was just like, I was going to school for it. Hated the school. Hated my job. Was in a factory with no windows every single night, losing my mind, and I just couldn't stand it anymore. And then all of a sudden, we went through a layoff, and then I found this thing called the second career program, and then they paid me to go back to school, and they were just like, "Well, what do you want to do?" I'm like, "I guess I could be a welder," and they're like, "No, no, no. What do you want to do?" I'm like. Well, I always want to be on the on the radio, and they're like, "Well, if you want to be on the radio, find a school to be on the radio, and we'll pay for it." And that was kind of how it happened. And then two months into my first year, I got on the Wolf. That's pretty awesome. I mean, it was pretty awesome, but I mean, like, I just took that chance. Like, I mean, like, I know what it's like to just like I threw everything away because it was just like, dude, you have welding tickets. Like, you are gonna, you know, you're gonna get the sweet job in the factory. And like, everybody was telling me I was an idiot for doing this, and I was just like, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm going with this, and I'm going full bore, and it's gonna work out. And I've been doing that for ten years, and now I'm taking another leap, and I'm doing this podcast thing. Where it's just like I invest so much of my time and I invest, you know, a little bit of cash into it and stuff like that just to make it, you know, good enough where I would be proud of it. And now all I want to do with this is just make it into a hobby. You know, I'm not making any money doing this, but what I'm doing is I'm creating a platform for something that I love, which is indie music. Is there anything else? Is there one song that you've always wanted to cover, but you haven't actually tried yet, but you're really thinking this one's in the back of your head that you're going to try to pull out one day? Not really, because I've kind of the second I I decide I want to cover something, I make at least a rendition. Uh, mm-hmm. It's probably not as complex as the originals, but I, I do something. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I don't change up the voice it, and everything, of course. Right? I mean, basically, just a lot of this wildlife. Because I don't know if you've heard of those guys, but it's this big bearded dude, and he's okay. got the most gentle falsetto ever. And I'd love to be able to cover those songs, but I can't do it huh. <laughs> that's gotta be frustrating uh it is it is but uh you know what we all have our vocal range so yeah. you know what i've always wanted to see that nobody does nobody covers joey by concrete blonde it's the most beautiful song in the world no one ever covers it you don't know it do you no i don't you've never heard joey by concrete I, blonde. i probably friggin' heard it but when I you're mean... drunk and passed out on the floor joey i'm not angry anymore all right tell the good people tell that camera this right camera back. yeah over one. there or the big one up there okay there, over there here go. go with the big one right <laughs> there tell the good people where they can find their music everything they need to know about Corey merritt also beer all right guys so you can find me on facebook instagram at Corey merritt music all one word um on spotify you can find me there too apple music uh basically all major streaming platforms all right. And um, look out for his great cover of You Got a Friend in Me because my kid's going to love that you did that song. That's one of his favorite songs from one of his favorite movies, Toy Story. It's one of my favorite movies, too. Disney tracks. Yeah. Boom. Did you know that Randy Newman also wrote Mama Told Me Not to Come for Three Dog Night? <laughs> no, I did Absolutely. not. Absolutely. That, that is a Randy <laughs> Newman <laughs> song. It's all. Oh, okay. All right. Side bonus content right here <laughs> oh, after shit. hours. All right. Yes. Randy Newman wrote, you know, pour some whiskey in your water and some something in your tea. That is Randy Newman. He wrote that song about his very first party coming to L.A. (laughs) And I want to say it was like Robbie Krieger of the Doors meets meets Randy Newman and then takes him to a party. And he writes that song and then gives it to Three Dog Night. But yeah. That's pretty intense. Yeah, Mama you don't told really me ex- not to come. <laughs> you don't really expect that to come out That's of Randy, a Randy Newman. Newman song, and he also wrote "You Got a Friend in Me" from Toy Story. You 
got troubles, I got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together, see it through, cause you got a friend in me. Some of the folks might be a little bit smarter than I am, big and stronger too. But none of them will ever love you the way I do. It's just me and you, girl. And as the years go by, a friendship will never die. You're gonna see it's our destiny. Yeah. You got a friend in yeah, you got a friend in me Yeah, you got a friend